Now we haven't been able to find the, the gold egg, which is missing from the BAM stand, but uh, we do have the cuckoo's egg, so we're going to try that and uh, see if we can get um, Hans's contraption working there in the centre of the university square. So we are just going to have to run back. Uh, let's just run through the train here. It's probably the quickest way there. We'll just walk around to the other side. Uh, we're going to have... Oh, no, no, don't go, don't go back. Let's have a look at uh, this doorway here. Now, there is one gold egg. We have the cuckoo's egg. Um, let's see if we can balance this out. There we go. And, of course, turn the wheel. And uh, the door will open. We'll be able to get inside and uh, hopefully get this thing running. Let's just head on down here. Um, and there's, there is nothing to do here except uh, pull this lever. So let's go and do that. And the whole contraption should start working. Okay, beautiful. So we've got it working again. The reactors are going to uh, to be very happy with that. Really wasn't uh, very hard to get it working. It just needs to, to pull the lever, and uh, that was all. And pretty much all works automatically. So we can go back to the rectors and uh, let them know about it. They should give us that $100 and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get our train towed uh, to the winding mechanism. Oh, oh, wrong way. Here we go. Let's, uh, let's open these grand doors. That's fine. We'll have a chat with them. I was just thinking I needed to, needed to show them something, but no, we're just going to have a chat. forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. Okay, show me the money. Gentlemen. I have managed to repair your university bandstand. The bandstand is playing again. This is marvelous news. We are really very grateful, very grateful indeed. Yes, very grateful indeed. We will look back on your visit with much fondness in our hearts. And now let us in turn honor our word. How much is it you need, miss? A hundred dollars, if it's not too much to ask. Something about it. <clears throat> we agreed to grant you the aforementioned sum, miss. You may now leave with your train. And while we're on the subject, when will you be leaving? Uh, yes, because now you should relocate your train as quickly as possible. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. All right, thank you. And thank you. Okay, let's get out of here. So, we've got the money. We can give this to the sailors on the barge. Okay, just heading back into the barrack stock station. Uh, we're, we're pretty much done here, I think. We've pretty much done everything we need to do. There is the university lecture to attend, uh, which we'll get to just before we head off. So, let's go down these steps again.
And uh, we're going to hand this money over to these over to this couple here and There you go. Here's your money. I've checked it. It's all there. Ah, thank you. Not difficult to get daughter, see? You are a real businesswoman. I'm not the only one around here. We please to do deal with you. Now, you open lock or we no help you. Why didn't you manage to open them? After all, you don't have to be a genius. Ma vor bat pensiro sesto, di kleiner madam. No se saye mara alles non comprendo en allora kaput en andere mordel. Zirs war moi. On boom telefonieren kaput kaput. My husband say instructions complicated. No understand manual. My husband angry. Very angry. Oh, now telephone broke. Kaput. Now that is annoying. What are you gonna do next? We wait repairman. Well, I don't have the time to wait. I'll have to go have a look. There must be some way of releasing the opening mechanism. Take key. Sailor always need key for lock. Okay, so he's going to get throw us the key, and this should enable us to okay, thanks to work the locking mechanism, so that we can actually get this barge through. So let's grab the key. And we're going to run up here, up the steps again. Just past the bridge, there is a kind of a control spot where we can actually um, open and close uh, the gates of this channel. And uh, that's what we need to go to. Hello? Hey, how's my little baby girl? I was thinking about you only yesterday because I saw this fantastic fur coat. You are wrapping up warm, aren't you? I mean, people in foreign countries never know how to dress properly for the weather. Mom, it's so sweet of you to worry, but I'm fine, really. The trip's a breeze, no worries. I mean, there's... Well, when are you coming back? Frank is dying to meet you. Frank? Oh, yeah, you're a singer. You two seeing each other then? Oh, you'll never guess the surprise he gave me yesterday. No, I suppose I won't. Frank invited me to a big charity show organized by, oh, uh, uh, well, someone or another, uh, anyway. They got him singing a couple of old numbers from his repertoire, and in the end, he asked me to go up on stage with him. Can you imagine me, your mother, on stage in front of thousands of people? Wow, I would have loved to have been there. Not too emotional, I hope. Oh, too emotional by far. Especially as I hadn't even been to the hairdresser. Well, I didn't even have the proper dress on. But Frank promised me he'd see to that next time. Oh, he's such a cutie. And he's such a sweetest little. I'm sure he has, Mom. It would be so good if you could join us one day. Let's see, when is his next gala? I'm so forgetful these days. I swear I'd lose my head if it weren't in the clouds. You just watch out, my girl. Them years will catch up with you much quicker than you think. I'll look out for them, Ma. Nice to hear your voice. Lots of love. We'll see you too, my little munchkin. Okay, let's carry on here. Um, over to the left. Um, this is probably the one spot we hadn't uh, been to yet. So let's have a look at this a little contraption here. In case of problems, contact the following number: two seven six 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 seven four two. Twenty seven sixty six sixty seven forty two. So let's give them a call. 
Uh, 27, 66, 67, 42. Welcome to the East Block Control Center. To start, press the number sign. Okay. If you are using the Haltenberg lock, press 1. If you are using okay, the, using the Braxdock lock, 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 press, press 4. Um, so we're going to press 4 here. If you want to raise the water level, press okay, 1. Okay, raise, press 1, if lower, you press lower the water 2. Level, press two. Uh, we want to press... Two to lower the water level. You want to lower the water level in the Barrackstadt lock? To confirm your choice, press star. Okay, we're confirming that, so press star. Your request has been logged. Unfortunately, our regional technician is currently on holiday and no replacement is available. We will reply to your request within 48 hours in case of an emergency. Please operate the lock system manually. Okay, so we need to operate the lock system manually because uh, nobody is answering our call. Um, so let's have a look here. Uh, we do need to put the key in here, so let's grab this lock key. Uh, it should open up for us. Here we go. Now we need to remember um, the numbers that we pressed. And I think it was four for barrack stop um, and then two for lowering the water. And then star, wasn't it? There we go. Okay, beautiful. The gate has been opened. So let's go and let these interesting characters know about it. Let's run back down here and uh, send them through. quite a big station really and uh, not many people here hey there on the boat Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! My husband say, Hello, young lady! You want to talk to us? <laughs> okay, let's do this. Right, I've got it. I know now how the locks work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. Gott verdomm! Das ist eine echte Ladies! Alle toi, range... What did your husband say? Yo, hurry up! We hurry to... Okay, okay. We'll meet each other on the other side. By my train, okay? Okay, so they're going to drive their boat through. And uh, we do need to let them through the other side as well. So we will actually need to raise uh, the water level again. Okay, we're going to run over back to this mechanism again. As you can see, the boat is just parked there. Uh, the water level on the other side is uh, fairly high, so we do need to raise that again. We're going to have to do it manually. Uh, this time, we need to type in 4, and then 1 for raising the water, and star. Okay, so it looks like we are ready to uh, tr to tow this train uh, into place. Let's 
Let's run over the bridge once more and uh, go and have a chat with that couple again. We do need some way to hook up the, the boat uh, with the train. And uh, that's where our hook that we found earlier uh, is going to come in handy. Okay. Hey there! On the boat! Da, da! Barge on other side! You still need us? Yes, I do still need you. There. Your barge is over the locks now. It's up to you to keep your part of the bargain. Yes, Berenstrau. Attach loco loco. My husband say, return to train, attach chain, then barge will pull. Okay, I'll get moving. I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Do svidania. Um, okay, where's the chain? Hey there. On the boat. Da, da, barge on other side. You still need us? Um. It must be really neat to travel by river. Oh, schleck the boat. I never forget that grund. Excuse me? My husband say he like his barge and he not like your train. Too noisy. If you want to travel in tin can, you stay in tin can. <laughs> sure. Okay, uh, let's get, need some, we need some help here. What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak, loco coco chain. What did your husband say? You attach chain to train and chain to train with barge. Oh, catch it up. Okay, beautiful. The chain by itself is not going to do anything. We need to um, attach this hook uh, to the end of the chain. Beautiful, perfectly in place. Now, a bit of a problem with the the train winding mechanism is that I suppose you need to have it exactly in place uh, for that to actually work. But it looks like it is pretty much exactly in place. Uh, let's head down now. Head, let's head uh, down to the train and uh, see if we can get it uh, wound up for the uh, the next part of the journey. Once again, it's been a, a fantastic graphical display here. Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukol at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. Okay, so we do need to run back to the university now. The, the lecture is about to start. So they are making us do a little bit of running here. But it won't take too long to run back uh, into the university. It is, uh, it is such a pretty game that I actually don't mind going through these scenes, you know, three or four times uh, per location. Because it's just, uh, yeah, it just looks so nice. But uh, anyway, the lecture is about to start, so we haven't been up here yet. Let's head up. Actually, we need to head onto this uh, platform first. Let's head up to the uh, the lecture hall. And uh, Professor Pons is going to give us a lecture about uh, about mammoths. Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson.
Okay, here we go. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukos date back to the last Ice Age. And curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. These people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, to the edges of Siberia. Three historic cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yukol forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes, as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yukol's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yukol Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian Ice Ark is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukol's tender care. The island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. 
My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkovs and Sovkov systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukos' traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yuko population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live, or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lectures should you so require them. Okay, so that's the end of the lecture. It did go on for quite a while, and uh, we're going to head back to his laboratory and grab the mammoth doll. Uh, we will need that to actually leave uh, this train, leave this area, I should say, um, because Oscar won't uh, won't start the train without it. So let's head on out of here. This guy's still asleep. I think he slept through the whole lecture. <laughs> um, let's head on out. back down to uh, Professor Pond's laboratory and there's another uh, pamphlet he has there as well with a little bit of extra information but basically the the Yukals, some of them have been traveling around and what they think what the theory is is that um, they've found another island where they've been living on for all of these thousands of years and some people suspect that the mammoth is, uh, is still alive on this unknown island Let's, uh, let's pick up the mammoth before we go. And uh, we have the, uh, the pamphlet here as well. Okay, yes, the legend of the Ivory Ark. Uh, the Yurkul people sent... Um, an ark out with mammoths and with some of their people on board to find other lands to inhabit and the ship came back and the people were gone but the, and the mammoths were uh, frozen inside and this, uh, this kept on happening for, uh, for many years um, so the legend is, is that somewhere out there there are the Yukul still alive on an island and uh, possibly that's where Hans has gone or maybe that's what he's gone searching for Okay, we're going to head back into the train here as well, and... Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. I'm off, Oscar. See you later. Yes, Kate Walker. Uh, we can't continue our journey just yet. We do need to put the mammoth back. Um, I was just thinking there was a third... Uh, voice cylinder here, which I did find uh, the first time I played this. I'm just wondering where it was. Um, let's grab the mammoth and place it back down here. I 
I do need to find that third uh, voice cylinder. Now, where did I find it? Um, let me have a look around. Okay, so I'm back in the university, and I think there is something that I missed, the voice cylinder in the laboratory over here. Uh, so let's head back into the professor's laboratory. And uh, hopefully on one of the shelves, we'll be able to spot... Here we go. Let's have a quick look in here, and uh, as you can see, we do have the voice cylinder. Beautiful. So I'm going to take this back to the train, and we can have a listen to it. Okay, so I've been back to grab the voice cylinder. We're going to actually place it um, down here and have a listen. The barrack stock voice cylinder. Hans, I have some very sad news. Our father is dead. He passed away peacefully last Sunday in his sleep. I feel so lonely now. Father had been but a shadow of himself since your departure. I had to take care of everything for him. Housework, factory paperwork, the workforce, clients, everything. And now, today, well, I really don't know who or what I'm fighting for. Times are so hard, and this terrible war is destroying everything. Nobody cares for our automatons anymore. I just think about you returning. And when you do return, I will have turned this factory into a palace worthy of your genius. Please take care of yourself. I love you so much. Anna. Okay, so there's a message from uh, Anna to Hans there about uh, their father's death. So we're going to put this back uh, on the shelf and we should be good to go. Let's have a chat uh, with Oscar and see if we can get this train running. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Oscar, get ready. I'm going to start winding up the clockwork engine. Good, Kate Walker. Then we can carry on our journey. An engineer prides himself... On punctuality. I know, Oscar, I know. Okay, so let's head out here and... I'm off, uh... Oscar. See you later. Yes, Kate Walker. Let's wind up the train, continue on our journey to, uh, to the next part, the next town.